welcome. I'm Jane Trigere, and this is Talking Art. We're sitting in the Deerfield Arts Bank, and we're interviewing local artists. Every week, we have a new artist to introduce and talk to. And if there is somebody that you think I should be interviewing, you can, or if there are some questions that you wish I would ask and that I'm not asking, please direct those suggestions to the email below the screen. Uh, today we are speaking to Alexandre Pazmandi. Uh, may I call you Alex yes, or would sure. you prefer to be called Alexandre? No, Alex is fine. Alex. Yes. Alex, welcome. Um, you have an accent, so I have to ask you, where are you from? Um, I'm from France, and um, yeah, we, we, are, you know, we arrived with, uh, with my wife something like um, almost five years ago now, and um, yeah, that's it. I'm from there. From, from France? From France, yeah. From yeah, Paris? Yeah. Uh, I lived in Paris. I got married in Paris, and uh, I moved from there. And, uh, well, you, you, do you live, did you live in France in a region that resembled this? Um, not, not quite, but um, this region, you know, we chose to, um, we had a project here, and, um, and we chose a region for, um, you know, the open-mindedness of, of the area and, uh, you know, many, many other uh, interesting, interesting things the valley has to offer you know, like culture and, um, you know, things like that. Didn't you say something about Mass Mocha? Yeah, 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 Mass Mocha, yeah. Mass Mocha was, um, well, I had, um, I had an internship uh, in the studio um, in, in a mill uh, in North Adams, uh, where the Mass Mocha, the Museum of Contemporary Art is located. And um, we we went there like uh, like a day like like today uh, you know rainy pretty dark and uh, pretty cold uh, for the for the season and um, I gave it up just just because you know my son uh, was at that time was two and a half and when we arrived in North Adams it was so desolated so depressing and. You wanted I something more exciting, like the lo <laughs> like the Pioneer Valley. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I didn't know the the, the valley uh, before. Uh, you know, I, I never lived here before. But uh, yeah, within within an hour, I mean, within ten minutes, I told my wife I, I I couldn't I couldn't make it. You know. But the kind of art that you like and do seems more suited to Mass Mocha than to what we have around here am I right yes yes you're right it's more you know I, I'm I'm you know dealing with more conceptual ideas and um, and, and 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 different um, medium I'm using mm -hmm. know, not 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 you know I'm not using paint in itself I can use canvas um, or graphite but not really uh, you know I'm not I have a I went uh, beyond the the, the, uh, the brush and the, and, and the hand together. Did you start with the brush? Yeah. You I were an yeah. art student? Yeah, sure. I, I went a conventional art student? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Not really. Did you go to conventional art schools? Uh, I don't know what's a conventional okay, art Okay, never school. mind that question. But I went to different art schools uh, 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 over my, you know, over the past. And uh, I studied in, in Besançon uh, in France. It's a... Um, it's in Franche Comté uh, region. It's really um, it's few hours north of Geneva, Switzerland, and um, this is the um, hometown of uh, I mean, you know, the area where uh, Gustave Courbet, a famous uh, you know impressionist uh, artist, uh, grew and and uh, and um, settled, and and uh, also um, you know one of a, a famous uh, philosopher. I I really. Um, you know, who opened up, you know, the way, my way of, of, of putting things together, uh, um, re relating the, you know, uh, people and, and, you know, on a more equal way uh, together. I, uh, maybe I'm... <laughs> okay, tell me the name. I Just give us... Uh, it's um, Charles Fourier. 
Fourier. Fourier. Well, he was. Uh, he was. He had. Um, he was a new utopian philosopher from the 18th century, and um, born in Besançon as well. And um, so these were your early influences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A and he was. He 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 designed more. Uh, uh, you know, like he wanted to restructure society on a, on a more um, equal and you know uh, a level. Mm -hmm. So you know, more, you know, better, better wages for workers, you know, things like this. So he was, after his death, he was considered by others who created socialism as one of the first uh, socialists in, uh, in the country. So that's not because of that, but the idea of equality and, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, in, in economy and uh, through, throughout people <coughs> in the, you know, mid 18th century, was pretty avant-garde and mm -hmm. um, and um, mid 18th century. Yeah, yes. with the phalanster, etc. Yeah. So okay, so these are your early influences, and yeah, the, so. and maybe we should talk about some of the early stuff that you did in Europe. You also went to school in Budapest in Hungary, and in in the south of France as well. <coughs> yes. So that was yes. But 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 we have some images of you that not something we can show here, but only photographs. Mm -hmm of you as a slightly younger man, yeah. um, doing what I think we would call performance art. Yes, indeed, it was. Uh, so the, the, the first one that I'd like to talk about, I mean, there are three that we have pictures of, mm -hmm. and one of them looks like you're conducting an orchestra. You have, it looks like you have a um, music in front of you. What are you doing in this photograph, and mm. where are you? Well, uh, I am downtown uh, Budapest on a big, big uh, uh, square where uh, you know a lot of people are walking around, and uh, uh, that was in uh, let's say ninety early nineties, I would say ninety three, ma maybe ni yeah ninety four, maybe ninety four. What's the message that you're trying so to give that's here? that's twenty one years ago. <laughs> yes. Uh, the idea he here is to to use my body as the subject of the art and not as a as a tool uh, that can hold a brush. Okay. Yes. So we have we have we have performance. We yeah. have you present. Yes. You are the art. Yeah. Uh, you are reading something, I think. Yes. What are you reading? Uh, it's an obituary. You're reading obituaries. Yes. In Hungarian. Yes. In the center of Budapest. Yes. To anybody who's passing by. Yeah. I had a loudspeaker. And so, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a microphone with a big, you know, mm -hmm. big thing, uh, like a voice, you know, yeah. they use fire, you know, firemen or people like this uh, uh, for emergencies. So it was really loud on the, uh, and all of the buildings were reflecting the, the sound. <coughs> So um, you were reading obituaries of famous people? No, it was it was obituaries of, of uh, um, people. ordinary people. Ordinary people, you know, people like and like, what was like the point? And, me. And, right. and, and, and the point wa was, uh, um, you know, it's the the absurdity of it uh, is the only. Uh, it's one of the thing human beings can 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 do, and at the same time, uh, you cannot escape from that if you don't if you're not aware. So uh, reading uh, 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 an obituary in the center of Budapest uh, with a musical a music um, a music stand stand and with a plant was also to make fun to to mock death and to make to pay tribute to um, to those those people who are unknown dead, unknown and, uh, and 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 make and have fun. You know, this is the, the 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 other thing. Oh, so oh. I was I was I was um, you know using using the um, so yeah it so it deals with uh, um, sound with music with uh, uh, you know like poetry said uh -huh. in public uh -huh. declamation uh, declamation mm -hmm. but at the same time um, it's a very hu dark humor. So the other um, two are dark. Are one of them is musical yep. and the other is dark. Let's Dark. start with the musical one. This is you on top of a piano. There's a policeman in the front of you. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and there's something hanging from your ankle that looks like 
I don't know what. What is that? Uh, this is a, a rope, and at the end of the rope, uh, there is a, an orange. So it was a, it was a tribute to uh, both uh, John Cage and, and uh, Paul Éluard. John Cage? Yeah, the John Cage. The, uh, the musician, yeah, the, the musician. composer? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, so and Paul Éluard? And Paul Éluard. Uh, a uh, French? A French poet. Poet. A French okay. writer and poet. So he wrote, um, well, th this, this particular uh, item on my ankle was um, an orange. Um, um, because, I mean, he, he, he said once, uh, Earth is blue like an orange. Earth is blue like an orange. Yeah. So if you take if you take Earth, I mean the planet, it's it's a blue from from the sky, from from the, the atmosphere, um, from the space. It's a it's the blue planet, right? So um, um, so it refers the the spherical idea of the planet to an orange, which you can get, um, you know, at that time, you know, Christmas time. So a fruit which is nice and good and, and, and great uh, like the earth. So, you know, the, 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 meta the metaphor was combi to combine those, those two things. And, the, and standing on the piano? Okay, the standing on the piano, and so I had, the, I mean, the tit title of the piece is a um, concerto for uh, horn, horn concerto. So I, I took, a, I took a, a very old p piano actually, from phew, like a mile away, so I carried it with a hand truck. Uh, you know this little thing with two wheels. Yeah, so hand truck. Hand truck, yeah, so so heavy. So uh, I because it was in Aix-en-Provence and uh, it was really sunny and really hot that day. So I took it there and um, I, I I started to play uh, Eric Satie uh, to the to, to to the public, to the cars and people, and you know. So it was uh, a refer. Um, a tribute, a kind of a, um, a wink to uh, John Cage because he liked, I mean, and I like to uh, the, the sound in general. Sound as a note, you know, you just go and you have a very matte sound, but which is interesting. You have another sound which is interesting to somebody's, you know, honking or hon honking? Honking. honking. Uh, so that would make a, a tone, an another, you know, uh, note. So putting that together as at the same level as a classical way of producing music. So sound and music are as an equivalence of, you know, creative uh, uh, field. Uh -huh. So I was using the, I, w I was, I had, a, I had a sign on my hands saying horn in, in French, uh, which, you know, uh, I was I was trying to have people. How do uh, you say horn in French? Um, a klaxon. Klaxon. A oh, horn from a car horn. Yes, from a car horn. Uh -huh. So I, w I would uh, I would uh, you know they would look at me on the on the piano and, and and look at my sign, and say wow it's you know so first of all the there's the a dissonance. Yes, yes, but also the idea was to take those sound and create a piece, a musical piece, downtown with a piano and with the, with the cars. So the concerto, um, you know, was, um, I, you know, it's fair, you know, the, the piece was, was, was um, um, thought between John Cage, Eric Satie and Paul Éluard. You know, all together, and with a little and uh, Alex, Alex, uh, yeah, 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 of course. Uh, and so um, you, by taking this picture of this moment, it, uh, it, somebody it else took to the pictures. Yeah, it of remains a, a, an event that happened. It's not just a memory. There's an actual picture of you actually doing this. Yeah, and, but it only was one event that happened in for a period of maybe an hour once yeah. in your lifetime. Yes, exactly. Yes, right, a passing moment. Yeah, it's a passing moment. I would, I, w I would, I would, s I would, uh, you know, say <coughs> it's um, it deals with uh, with uh, ephemer ephemeral ephemeral ephemeral, and also uh, um, um, the idea, you know, um, an, an, you know, a, f a fluxus idea was uh, to um, to use uh, ideas as um, 
kind of anti-art, but also, uh, and, and, you know, something non-commercial. Okay. So the idea was to to get to to conceive an idea with some, you know, whatever you want to put in an idea, and to do the idea. So it's not really too too far from theater if you if you think about it theater like yes. you know and we could say that performance art started uh, you know in in, in the late 40s um um with um the living theater actually and uh, you did uh, malina i guess in 1947 where you know they were on the stage there were well, i don't know 15 maybe 10 15 people and they were all of them were doing something but different from the other. So uh, one was jumping. Unrehearsed. Yes. Sorry? Unrehearsed. Yes. Unplanned. Um, maybe Yes. Unplanned, but also planned. But, I mean, you were doing something. He was doing so, you know, something. She was doing something. So it was kind of a chaos or kind of a, you know. A cacophony. Cacophony as well. And, and we had, you know, Stockhausen. The you know dodecaphonism in 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 music, um, um, you know all of that that ta that period you know late forties to the to, to mid sixties uh, or early seventies was you know a tremendous uh, 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 period of creation. Uh, well, let's let's move on to these sure. movements yeah, and yeah. see what what the result was in 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 a visual moment here. So these were passing moments. There's another one here, but I want to get to some of this art because, you yeah, know, yeah, well, I want to make sure I cover everything here. So from this, you, this, is, this is back in Europe. Now all of this stuff that we're looking at here is created in the United States. Yes. yes. And so to me, what's right behind us here is extremely ephemeral. Yes. And yet it's also extremely permanent. It's something that is unconsidered. Mm. Tell us a little bit about this. <coughs> yes, so... Uh, Do you give it a name? Um, yeah, this is a, a self-portrait uh, with you, actually. Uh, not you, but not you... Not only me, but I understand that the fact that there's light over there and passing traffic, yes. that's an important piece of this. Yes. Um, you know, the idea of, uh, of uh, this piece was to... Uh, to uh, well, actually, this is a you know lint uh, from a dryer, so for my dryer. So you have all kinds of interesting things kept into those uh, the filters. So and this is lint from the 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 dryer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you have you know hair and you know and dust and everything. So uh, this is the, the the body part. You know, performance art implies the body, um, and you know the idea of Mar Marcel Duchamp was to imply the um, the audience to finish a piece. So here you kind of finishing. I mean, pe the viewer finishes the piece by being right by in by the being reflection inside the piece uh, in with the reflection. Well, so I, I, for me, it's a picture of you. For you, it's a picture of me, I suppose. Yeah, so it's, it's your portrait, too. Because, uh -huh. you know, dust and lint is really something we're going to, right? Yeah. So <laughs> when we're going to be dead, this one would maybe sit somewhere or be just, you know, as, as, as dust. Skin, skin particles. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it's, it, so you've got different layers... In yeah. different colors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I, I, I watched it. Stuck between uh, two pieces of plexiglass. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Self-portrait. Yeah. So, right behind you, let's tell me what that is. Oh yeah, this is a um, this is a beaver uh, work. So I titled it uh, after um, uh, Joseph Boyce's idea of uh, uh, he was uh, explaining painting to a dead hare. And actually, this is a, um, a beaver who created this piece of wood. So you have a, a sort of title of this piece is uh, 
um, sculpture explained by a beaver. So you have two ready-mades here, um, one from you know, natural, um, you know, um, an animal, and the other one from the, the, the metal industri industry, which is a stainless steel. So you have a, you know, uh, the, the nature really, really uh, wanted to do, uh, you know, its own thing, and, 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 and you know, society, um, culture, who, who does the other thing, and I put that together. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you never did anything to this piece of wood? No, just assembled it. This is the way it, you assembled it? Yeah. Two ready-mades put together. Yes. Thank you. And what about this one over here, behind me? Um, well, this one was, um, was designed with um, a rifle, um, a Winchester rifle from, you know, 60, 60 years of age. And um, it's, yeah, it's to bring a little bit, uh, you know, more awareness uh, to, uh, to the gun, uh, the, you know, the weapon industry, gun industry in, uh, in the U.S. in 2015 because... So you trace the, the you're, yeah, you're tracing I, I the gun yes. in different positions? Yeah, I traced it and I, I, I tried to, to use the gunpowder at the beginning and uh, I used some of it and then um, uh, I used, uh, you know, uh, markers. It was way... Uh, better. So, so the, your interest here is in patterns that I find very, besides the political message, I, I get that piece, but what I see here is the, is the beginning of something that is going to introduce the rest of what we're looking at, is this intense look at patterns. Yeah, uh, mm. I titled it, uh, you know, American Symphony, because, uh, um, you know, most of uh, my, my, my work have a sound connotation, or produce sound, or so you know the rifle is is a is is a sound people are used to uh, hearing it here in this country so um and to to and it's okay to have guns i mean guns everywhere uh so i just wanted to to make an emphasis on that point that uh -huh. it's not really okay but i see so that's the political but the, you message know, repetition but the repetition repetition of motifs yes and, and mo you know pattern repetition so le let's look <coughs> at these patterns we've got yeah. two s t uh Three different things to look at here. Th three. Um, one is um, one. I one is. Uh, what are we calling these? Um, these are made out of uh, tape. It's a uh, tape composition. Tape composition. Duct tape, and, and we duct tape. Yeah. So we have four of them here. We have yep. this blue one next to us, and we have a gray one, an orange one, and a gold one that has a window in it. Gold and white. Am I Gray. Gray, gray. Gray and, and green. What is going, can Dark, you yeah. describe what you're doing okay, in all uh, of these? Yeah, there was a, there was a, um, well, my work has been also uh, uh, um, uh, influenced by, by minimalis minimalism. So, of course, somebody, I mean, not of course, but um, Sol uh, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. So, um, and he, he, he's probably the, 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 the one who created minimalism. So in, in those uh, compositions, um, I'm using duct tape because he, uh, he, he made so many structures. He didn't call them, at the beginning, he didn't call them sculptures. He's co he called them structures. So, so, which, so which, which, to, which for, our, for our audience, <coughs> you can go to Mass Mocha and see until 20,000 30. Tw 2030, yes, you yes, can yes. see yeah, 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 room yeah. upon room yeah, upon yeah, yeah, room yeah, yeah, of yeah. these amazing yeah. constructions, you call them? Yeah. Constructions yeah. of yeah. color, mostly a lot of structures, different colors. Structures. Structures. Uh, that he would, yeah. he would, he would, he would, the instructions were the, the, the length and the width of lines, but other people painted them. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, yeah. I, I so this is what you're playing off of here. Y yes and no. Uh -huh. But the thing is, uh, he used uh, until a certain point. Uh, I mean, maybe the the, the, the late seventies. Uh, he used uh, you know these uh, opposite colors patterns, but with graphite. Um, so just two 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 colors, but in in gray shade. So uh, and then he went to Italy, and his palette exploded into colors. Then uh, to make his uh, pieces, he used the duct tape to to be really clean. And to, to, to make it to make it uh, sharp and straight as a line or a curve. Um, so my my proposition here is to make to have bi dimensional or tri dimensional 
uh, objects which are which have both, you I know, th I uh, think you could see it very well yeah, here. By dimen dimension, two dimension, frontal, and three dimensions. So you can whether take it, yeah, uh, or it's going in or it's yeah, going out. Get it. And, and you know, the, the bigger one is to uh, to, to introduce uh, emptiness into okay. the okay. The, this uh, this piece that's piece. hanging in that <coughs> was hanging in 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 the dear f in the in the uh, yep. gallery here. Yep. W w this one is not th at all the same thing. This is photography, and you call this drone boogie woogie, and it's a pixelated picture yes. from a drone. Yes, yes. And it's a cityscape. Yes. Correct. Yes. It's a it's a kind of a yeah the remain. You know it, <coughs> this is a political statement too. Yes. Of course. Yes, but you know. All art is politics. Sure. I mean. Yeah. Is all politics art? No, I won't no. ask that. No, no. So, so this piece, uh, you know, has been pixelized uh, 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 through, you know, with the computer, and um, and um, you know, the, the the interesting thing of it is is uh, I put it I put it on tarp because uh, the you know after the strikes of the drones, people were kind of uh, not in a good shape, correct? So they were not even. Uh, wrapped into um, this piece of of, of, of uh, fabric you put you, you put around corpse. Oh, after the drone strikes, yeah. they were dead, yeah, not in were, good yeah, shape. They yeah. were dead. There was a, you know, kind of oh, so metaphor. they were wrapped in tor tarps. They were not. They That's were why I, I, I printed uh, this thing on a tarp. Uh huh. And uh, yes, and um, so right. let's 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 go from the. Um, is there a political statement in these? Uh, well three th what do we call <laughs> these group uh, this group uh, he, he, he's, he, they're, they're part of a, a, um, a show that I that was titled um, um, corporate camouflage corporate uh, camouflage yeah. so, so we've um, got one with squiggles one with diagonal lines mm -hmm. and one with watery kind of yeah fields. and you have, you and have this one as well uh, which I will start with because this is this took me a, a, a very long time. So um, yeah, you have uh, patterns when you, when you get some some uh, 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 some mail uh, from from any any kind of a corporation or institution. You get and so to hide all of those datas, sensitive datas, they they have created their own abstract patterns. So. Uh, you mean the, the stuff we see on the inside of their envelopes? Yes, exactly. And so I used, I used, uh, and I've been, you know, I've been collecting envelopes for like the past four years. Um, so asking friends and people around me, do you have that? I know I don't have this one. So it, it, took, it took me, so I have a, you know, huge amount of them. S and, and so people are responsible in the company to create, to create abstraction. This. To hide those sensitive data, correct? Yeah. <coughs> so I, I use, <coughs> sorry, I used um, uh, a projector because uh, you know it's really small. I used a projector and projected like a uh, hundred more times, enlarged it hundred times, and that will give me a good, good, good link for my next uh, thing. Um, s and and I recreated that. So you have to be aware that all of those those uh, pieces have been created in the dark, you know. Um, Against the wall and just with a projector. Uh huh. So and uh, this is pencil. No, this is graphite. Graphite. So and then after to after after uh, you know uh, to fill out the form, uh, you have probably uh, uh, you know on this in, in this piece you have probably I don't know 150 pieces of uh, you know sticks and, and dots. So um, it took maybe maybe uh, three minutes by 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 small thing so it, it was really long and meditate meditative and you know bringing 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 more uh, uh, awareness to the pattern that were created by a corporation to uh, to blur uh, you know datas so that's uh, the my interest is is, uh, is on that point um, so who 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 owns who owns this abstraction who right? owns this? Right. Who owns abstraction? Especially know? if you enlarge it by a hundred percent. Hundred times. Uh, hundred times. Hundred times. Hundred times. Yeah. Well, who knew that uh, such uh, intriguing mm, 
I don't always know if it's beauty, but it's very interesting. Anyway. You know, the, the, inter the strange, interesting things, you know, you have, you have lines and you think when you look at them, they're straight and they're not straight at all. They're completely curved. So the, you know, to me, the you know, the reproduction of a, of a piece is, is even more interesting as the piece. So that's why, that's why, and I'm not putting any subjectivity more than what I see and what I can do. But in those, this one, you know, it's, it's the, uh, the one with the squiggles. <laughs> yeah, you can call them squiggles, if you want. Uh, it's really interesting. Uh, c c can't you see uh, 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 some some reminders of uh, Keith Haring? Oh yes, I right? see all sorts of amoebas, and Keith Haring. Yes. So yes. Uh, you know. Uh, you, you but now, now I now I see corporate artists. America and and Mr. Pazimondi. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? I have to. Uh, I'm going to take that opportunity to end on that because when I see these now, I actually will think of you, Alex. Okay. And um, I have a new uh, idea of what I'm going to do with all the lint that I've been collecting from my um, dryer because I keep thinking that there's something to Good. do with it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And a, a new idea of of how, what to use duct tape for, perhaps. Maybe not. I mean, you could paint that, but I don't want to be. I don't want to minimize this. This is very thoughtful, careful, and intentional work. And in that, I am very impressed by the intentionality of something that we could look at quickly and say, "What's that exactly?" Oh, okay. But uh, what you've given me a sense of is how serious and how um, focused your uh, vision is. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And thank you for listening. And um, I'm Jane Treger. We are sitting at the Deerfield Arts Bank. This is Talking Art. And today we were talking to Alexandre Pazmandi.